So, what do we have today? How to store your photos safely, and why yours might not have been. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, and welcome to After Chat. Uh, I am Tom. And I am Ryan. And I had a hard drive crash this week. Mm-hmm. Actually, it might have crashed earlier than this week. It probably was probably, probably, earlier, but... Probably, actually, probably the move over here. That's the last time I can guarantee it worked before we got into, got into this, this space. That has led me to today's discussion topic is, and I know we've covered this briefly in the past, storing your files. At least moderately safely. At, at, at least well enough that if something goes wrong, you're not screwed forever. Mm-hmm. You know, I have two hard drives. My, two hard drives? Yeah, two hard drives in the computer right now. The SSD, I have a solid state drive, which just runs Windows and the Adobe applications because it's super, super fast. Uh, it's also really tiny. It's like 120 gigs. So after I put those in and put a swap file on it, it's pretty much done. What did they just get to? Five terabytes? On, in Flash? Yeah, SSD? solid state, solid state yeah, over you, the, the Southbridge PCIe. Yeah, you, you, there's yeah. a four or five terabyte one it's that's really, out now. really, really fast. And it's it's fast. It plugs right in the PCIe slot. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even go on your on your SATA. It's that fast. Back that up to an external. So so I have the two hard drives, uh, the 120 gig SSD, and then I have a one terabyte that I use for everything else. So it runs my games and it, it stores all my pictures and all my other documents. And I back that up to a two terabyte external, but it does a, a what do I call it? progressive backup, incremental backup. Does an incremental backup, so it has like one master file, and then every time something gets added, it only records what the changes in the ads were. But yeah, so your your backups go to a, an actual external backup, and they're not. All, I mean, they're done on a nightly basis. It's not. It's not every, every morning, four a.m. Yeah. It does the incremental backup, and I took it a step further because that hard drive isn't actually connected to my computer. So in case something were to happen to the computer, it's actually connected to the router's network attached st- attached storage, which doesn't cost me anything in speed or time in the backup, it's just fine. After we moved over here, I was getting errors that my backup wasn't completing, I was trying to figure it out. Thought maybe there was something wrong with the, with the network connection. I basically eliminated everything except for the fact that the drive itself was toast. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, I wanna see what's on the drive. So it's just the USB connection of the router, so I just pulled it out, plugged it in the computer, doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm does not do a single thing. It just, it doesn't even turn on the little blue light that says the hard drive's on. It just spins and spins and spins. And at first it wasn't clicking or anything, which is you know, like the general giveaway yeah. of your hard drive's crashed, it's clicking. And then I put my hand on it just without realizing it. Like I was reaching to grab something else. I put my hand on it, I could feel it clicking. Oh yeah. It wasn't loud enough to make any noise until I put my ear like right on it, but I could feel it go at least you know that that's dead. I hate the ones that it just doesn't work, and you know it's not actually the hard drive, it's not making any noises, It's there's something electronic in the board somewhere. I hate those. Where yeah. you know the hard drive is fine, but the casing is bad or something. And you have- yeah. So I have lucked out in this in that the it was within warranty, in fact, for like another week, it was within <laughs> warranty. So uh, I, I paid the 10 bucks for the advanced shipping so I can get the drive and then just pop mine back in their case and send it back. I figure that's easier than trying to package it up and ship it because they pay the shipping both ways. So it's cheaper just to have them do that than it is to just for the shipping cost alone. So I was like, screw it, send me one. And I'll just take their drive out of the packaging, put mine in, and off it goes back to the manufacturer who I will leave nameless until they screw this up and then I will let everyone know who it is. Yeah, so much like his is a internal main storage drive with an external backup. My my current system is the same way. I have the same 120 gig solid state. It was a cheap solid state drive. The computer boots very fast with those. Um, I have a 250 gig uh, programs hard drive. I have a two terabyte files, documents, music, all sorts of stuff, video backup stuff, yep. uh, storage drive, and then I have my photo drive. So. I have two three terabyte drives, an internal three terabyte, and then an external three terabyte. Uh, the external three terabyte runs its whatever software it came with, terrible 
backup. Was you using Windows backup like I am, which actually is very functional. It is. I was using the Seagate dashboard thing, which is pretty awful, but it worked, so I just kept using it. I have to still set mine back up after it moved. But what that gives me is three terabytes of storage, which then has a mirror in case one of those drives fails. I have the ability to go buy another three terabyte and deal with that. There are other options that, while limiting your storage space a little bit, give you increased performance as well as runtime. Like, while it's running, you can have a drive fail. Yeah. So that goes down to the, what we're talking about in the intro is that you can either do... You could, there's so many ways to store your photos. There really are. There are as many ways to store your photos as there are people storing photos. So no matter what we tell you, we, what we do or we'd like to do or what we dream of, it, the right solution is the one that works for you in your budget, in your, in your capabilities to run it. That's a big part of why we run the way we run is because up to a certain point, it doesn't make any sense to do some of these bigger, bigger systems. If you're also let's let's just kind of get into the, the sizes. When I look at stuff, if you're under probably six terabytes, I think if you're if you're under six terabytes of running storage, you can get away with so single drives being backed up to other drives. Yeah. Because a raid a raid array, which is multiple drives copying each other constantly, so that if one of them fails, the other three have all the data. It's just. Do, a, it's, do you know what raid stands for? I do. I actually very much do. I couldn't tell you right now. <laughs> it's right. a redundant yeah. array of inexpensive drives. And and the term inexpensive is very loose there because drives can be expensive, especially when you're buying a large batch of them to build arrays. That's I mean that part of that is that when you're building a raid, you can use not the top of the line. Yeah, that's drives. part of the idea. Is you don't have to buy top of the line drives to do it because it has the error checking and the fault tolerance and everything else. So, so to get specific with brands, when I'm buying a single drive for something, I will go Western Digital Black or better. So there's Western Digital like Enterprise. There's, and they're very expensive for the size that they are. They are much more expensive than a lot of the other drives. But a Western Digital Black drive has a much lower fault tolerance than like a Hitachi yeah. Seagate you, you, or whatever. It, it, they don't go down, basically. No, they, they'll run, like, my two terabyte has been running for five years, six years, and it's, I don't even worry about it, because I know it's a Western Digital Black. I bought it. It was cheaper than they are now, because this was before an, any number of disasters that made high drive really expensive for a long time. When you're building a raid, like, when I build raids, they're generally um, Hitachi or Seagate, I think it is. And those are, like, 30% cheaper a lot of the times. So yeah. The same size drive, the same speed, same performance. And they're roughly the same quality, but they will fail sooner than better quality drives. But that's why you put them in the array, so when one fails, you can recover everything. Uh, well, mm. we, here, here's the trick with RAID. RAID has different levels, and uh, the most rudimentary, they called RAID 0, and that is just a mirror. That is a physical two drives that look absolutely identical to the computer because they have exactly the same data. Uh, it's you don't gain any write speed because you're writing to two places. You do gain read speed because if you have a proper RAID controller, it can read from all the drives simultaneously and load into memory faster because it can pick different points and split it up. But uh, basically, it's there. If one drive crashes, you can pull it out, put in a fresh one, and the other drive will copy back to it slowly, but it'll copy back to it. Uh, and you'll, you'll have two copies again. And so you're always ready in case something goes wrong. Um, then you have RAID 1, which is volume striping, which is totally performance-based. You don't have any safety in your data that way. It is just, it takes all the hard drives and treats them like one drive and splits your data across them to make it faster to write, faster to read. It is 100% performance-based. Uh, so it is not actually for data storage or or data um, protection. Then you'll see what people call RAID 10 or RAID 0 plus 1, uh, which is stripe drives that are mirrored. This requires a lot of drives, minimum of four drives to do it properly. So if you're going to four drives, it's not necessarily the best way to go. Um, then you have RAIDs 3, 5, and 6, which use data parroting, and those are the ones that you can recover live on the fly. Um, Which is the important part of RAID, really. Yeah. 
Um, a big part of why you ever would even think about going to the more expensive RAID system is to have the ability to lose a drive while you're moving data and to be able to replace that drive and not worry about it. Um, and the performance increase is nice. On the downside, when you're reading Lightroom files out of a RAID database, it's much quicker. Um, but especially in RAID 5, which gives you the fault tolerance, it lets you lets one of those hard drives fail and crash and die completely, and you can just take it out and replace it and let the RAID rebuild onto itself. If you're not using f like four hard drives that are of four terabytes now, really, it's not yeah. worth the time and effort to deal with RAID. Because the hardest part to keep in mind is that the, the RAID drives have to match. Well, they don't have to match, but it will. They should. It, it will make them all think the size of the smallest drive you have in there. So that's why they have to match, otherwise you're just wasting space. And then in RAID 5, you actually have one less drive space than you have drives in there. So if you have four, four terabytes, instead of having 16 terabytes of storage, you really only have 12 because you have the uh, CRC, the, the cyclic redundant check, which is spread out across all the drives, but you lose a part of it. And then if you go to RAID 6, you have double cyclic redundancy, so you actually lose two drives. So four, four terabytes would act like eight terabytes. You wouldn't normally make a RAID 6 with anything less than like six drives, because otherwise mm -hmm. there's, other, there's better options. Um, but the fault tolerance is phenomenal. You can actually lose a RAID 6 drive and hot swap it out, and it can rebuild it in the background while you don't even know there's anything wrong. So, but that, but you're talking about a dedicated hardware, Lots of hard drives, lots of storage space. Probably holding more pictures than the amateur photographer is ever going to take in their lifetime. Yeah, um, I mean, unless they get, unless you know, we start seeing fifty meg raw files. And, usually, and at Photokina, Drobo had a. Um, what would they have their eight? It was a ninety-six terabyte Drobo setup. Mm -hmm. They had eight. No, they had twelve. I think it was, it was, it was like 16, six terabyte drives or something in it. It was something ridiculous. It was, it was a ton of storage. Yeah, it was 16, six terabyte drives in a RAID 6. So you really, okay, you lost 12. You still had, you know, 80, 84 terabytes of space in this box about the size of a 1970s home speaker. And it was just, you would pop the door open and there was just hard drives. And you were just like, I was like, What? Who would ever want that? And then realize, oh, yeah, there, there, there are people out there who take that many pictures and take have that kind of storage need. I personally have 250,000, 300,000 photos over the last five years. Um, that's across two and a half bodies or so. So two and a half Nikon bodies. That takes up right now two terabytes or so. I, I couldn't tell you how many pictures it is because I store my pictures very differently than you. Um, I have like two catalogs. Yeah, three you need two catalogs, and, and this is a whole different thing in in file storage that we could talk about. But um, you know, maybe when we're done talking about actual physical storage. Uh, but in the last, I would say four years, I've just about filled up that terabyte hard drive with ones I've kept. Because everything I took on the Rebel, I would delete ones I didn't want to keep. Um, I do that a lot less now. I keep, I mean, I take out the absolutely unusable ones, and anything that's even close, I hold on to. Oh, yeah. And so I save a lot more pictures now than I used to. So uh, what I'm actually looking to do, what I'm looking to go to for the, uh, for, for the upgrade here, because I'm, I'm almost out of space on this hard drive, I'm going to have to upgrade it. It's actually... A pair of three terabytes mirrored internally and then possibly buying another one because we have the server here in the in the studio that we basically only use for Ventrilo um, and just having that be my backup as opposed to an external hard drive and then I can use the two gigabyte uh, two terabyte external hard drive to store all the aperture chat stuff because that's all stored on a one terabyte external hard drive right now and we'll just I'll just start working off that one so the whole point of this discussion is that there's an absolute need for at least one level of redundancy for every single image and file that you make. Um, 
I don't delete many pictures. If there's something that's just completely useless, I'll delete it out, and that means completely useless. It takes a long time to go back through. I don't delete in body very often, so it takes a long time to go back through and delete unusable pictures for me, so I will generally just pile stuff on. Weddings especially, this is its own thing. When you shoot a lot of stuff for yourself, if you have something go down, it's not directly for a client, it's not as huge of a deal, it hurts you a lot for your portfolio, you're relying on whatever online backups you have, and this sort of thing. When you're actually working with someone's money for someone's images, these images are paid for, you need at least two backups, preferably one off-site that isn't actually physically near your PC. That's especially important for weddings. Weddings are the, the classic example of needing stuff that's not directly next to your PC. Whether that's an online backup or something you just take with you out of the office or out of your home when you leave, it's up to you. But it's desperately important that that's safe and away from your main storage of pictures. And you know, when you think about off-site backup, you know, some people, they automatically jump to the idea that it is something extremely expensive because if you actually go and you look for off-site backup and you know and you'll be like go google it and people you know, you'll see liquor you, you beat me to the punch so you'll see all sorts of services that are offered that charge you yeah. by the online gigabyte or whatever but think about it this way do you have an online portfolio there's your off-site backup i mean everything that belongs to someone else that I've taken is in my Zenfolio. Oh yeah. Everything. And they've got their own gallery, they can go see it, I can go see it, whatever, it's there, it's in full res. The only thing I lose if I do that is I lose the raw files, but I still have the JPEGs and I have the finished products, which is really the only thing they're really concerned about anyway. So, yeah, uh, that that's my off-site backup. My Flickr is a big, a big repository of that for me. But um, I had Picasso backing up mine for a while and I just, when it started to integrate with Google Plus, it, I wasn't yeah. so happy, so I, I stopped. Flickr with Yahoo is it has its own property of being terrible, but it's twenty five dollars a year for unlimited storage. It's not the fastest upload, but I cram thousands and thousands of photos on Flickr. It's a nice you can point people to the links. It shares very easily. You can track your metrics, your views, and all that sort of stuff. It's it's nice, but it's something that's. It's JPEGs, but it's something. Yeah. Having something that you can fall back on is always better than not, especially when it's as cheap as $25 a year and a little bit of bandwidth while you're sleeping. It's very easy. And, and I'll speak from experience. There's one file that I lost before I really got... Shut up. There's one file, and, and of all the pictures I took before I really got serious into photography, this is the only one I ever took that I was upset that I lost. I have the physical print of it, but... I don't have the digital image anymore. This was before I had a, a DSLR. This, this was done with a point and shoot. It's a beautiful post-sunset scene that I took at the summer camp I used to work at, and I have never been able to replicate it. And, and it's not for a lack of trying. Every year I go out there and I try and replicate it. You just, you can't. If you get that perfect image, you can't recreate it. I mean, I've been told, you know, well, why don't you scan it in? I said, because it's not going to be as nice. I have the hard copy. I have the physical print. It's in a frame. Uh, the worst case, I have that forever. So it makes that one physical print much, much more special because I don't want anything to happen to it. Yeah. I, I'm sad I lost that picture. I was out last weekend trying to recreate it once again. And it still, I couldn't do it. I think it might actually be the fact that my gear is too nice to replicate the picture at this point. So part of this is, reason we're talking about this is that his failed. The other is that there's a bit of a move by Western Digital to do some more photographer-centric mobile stuff. Um, the Western Digital wireless My Passport is a little tiny hard drive. They, they debuted it way before Photokina. It was like the beginning yeah. of the month. But but their big was push a, was at yeah, There was a big push at Photokina. So they, the one, they've been touting... There's a six-hour hard drive battery time, which I'm sure the battery is going to be awful in this thing. But the fact that it's a tiny little portable hard drive, and it has an SD card, SD card slot and Wi-Fi capability. So it has a, a, a battery, a Wi-Fi capability, an SD card slot, and a little hard drive. 
With this, you can take an SD card full of files, put it in the hard drive, and let it sit and back up directly to that hard drive, and then use its wireless capability to see and share and do whatever you need to do with those files via your mobile device or even your PC. This, I mean, the price is not that high. It's like 150 bucks for a 500 gig yeah. uh, passport wireless. It's one of those things I could definitely see using by just like sticking an SD card in a hard drive and letting it back up by itself. It's kind of a nice, nice concept. That's pretty quick too. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I want to see how quick it transfers and how long the battery actually lasts because I feel like six hours is a stretch for that little thing. I think it's just a little laptop hard drive, though. So. It is a little laptop hard drive, but it's also running the Wi-Fi. And it, every time I heard somebody say six hours, it just doesn't. Six hours feels like a gimme for that. I feel like it's probably more like four. What? They're, they're claiming six to eight, but. I, I mean, running for six would be cool. Um, well, I, I think because it's not always running all the time. But yeah. They're counting a percentage of that as sleep time, too. I think for me, it would probably be like real use would be four because I'd be trying to back up a 64 gig SD card. Never ever use cheap SD cards. No, they, it's pretty much SanDisk or Lexar. I don't... Oh, I use Sony, and I'm very happy with my Sonys. The Sonys are okay. Those are slow. I, I sure they make faster ones, but... But they're fast enough. I mean, my limiting factor in my camera is not the SD card. It's the, the buffer to the SD card. I, I found it noticeably slower, which was kind of weird. Well, in your case, it might your buffer might might not be the limiting factor. It might be the card in your it probably is, but it was because those are thirty megasecond, or are they f- thirty six? Oh, thirty six. That's a little no. But you really don't cheap out. There's there's a lot of places you don't cheap out, and I'm gonna make a, a certain video about this at some point about where to put money when you do photography stuff, and it's not in camera bodies ever. Um, there's very specific places to spend money, and one of the places to at least spend a decent amount of money is SD cards. And any sort of media you're writing anything to, whether it's hard drives, SD cards, or anything. So, the big takeaway from this before we just ramble on for another half hour is always, 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 always two copies of your pictures somewhere. Three if you're making money off of them because you never want to lose those. And, and, as much as I hate it when people do this, it's still better than not doing anything at all. When people just don't ever erase anything from an SD card and they just buy more SD cards, but they also put them on their computer. At first I was really upset with that and then I thought it through I said, but at least they have two copies. I, so I, I have a certain... I don't trust them. That. I don't trust storing data on SD cards long term, but you have two copies. I, I leave data on the second SD card as long as possible. So that's right, but that. you're not counting on it as long-term storage. No, it's it's more middle-term. It's like the two right. weeks until it's backed up online. It's actually, I like having the second SD card I can pop out and chuck. Right. But I'm talking about, like, I know people... Yeah, that they just never delete stuff. They, they buy the, the card books, the media books, specifically so they can keep it. And they'll even put, like, post-it notes with what's on it and wrap it around the card and keep it in there. I'm like, but, 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 no... Uh, whatever. So, you got to keep your stuff safe. So, yeah, that, that that's our discussion for this week is keeping your files safe. Um, I mean, how you organize them is up to you. That's just as varied as anything else. So, we won't even get into that today. That That's a topic for an entirely different day. Um, so, yeah, keep your files safe. Uh, we'll be back on Friday when our friend Erica will be here. Because she has had some experience in the wild with the Sigma 150 600, and we're going to get her to talk about that. Um, she was one of the uh, Sigma testers for it, actually. So she had a, a before they were even on sale, she had one in her hand to play with. So I thought that was pretty cool. She's going. She's a, a wildlife and, and uh, landscape photographer, so we'll get to get hear her point of view on that. And uh, yeah, if you like what we're doing here, if you like our tidbits, our advice. Uh, us for keeping up on the news on Mondays. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, like us on Facebook. We really enjoy having likes on Facebook. Um, not just to inflate my ego, but it gives you another way to keep in touch with us because I'm always posting things on the Facebook page as well. Um, the blog is aperturechat.com. Super easy to keep track of. Uh, also has links back to the YouTube. Um, 
Yeah, I and mean, that, that's pretty much everything for the for for our YouTube channel. Uh, you want to plug your plug yourself here, Ryan? I am at peacepointphoto.com for weddings. For weddings. Again, I'm going to make a shirt that says that. <laughs> for weddings. <laughs> I think you should. It's probably not bad, actually. And uh, you can find me at aperturetopixels.com. That's mostly a portrait and concert services. So uh, if you've got a band and you want someone to come take pictures of your concert, give me we a call. That. Yeah, we do that too. I actually really enjoy doing that. That is probably the highlight of my day when I get to do that. Uh, so, uh, and then, let's see, what else we got? Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. So subscribe, like, please leave us comments. If you got questions for us, and we, we're more than happy to answer questions as quickly. Yeah, I mean, if you know what the hell this thing is, I'd be friggin' impressed. If you do know what that is, in fact, just take guesses as to what that uh, is in the comments, because... Uh, I had no idea, but, yeah, that kind of thing. So... Yeah, if you can figure out what that's for, put it in the comments, give us some guesses. Maybe we'll uh, give you a clue what it is before the, uh, before the next video or maybe during the next video. We'll see what yeah. happens. Probably during the outro. Or in the outro because we don't know what else that we're going to do with our lives. All right. We'll see you next time. Sure. All right. So. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to say something. All right. Hold on.